Hello and welcome. This is Rufa Monger, my friends. This is the Choose a Main video for Undernight in Birth 2, Sisolus. So, as always in these videos, we're just going to be going over the entire roster of characters in the game, and I just want to give you a good idea of what they're all about. Some are more traditional fighting game fare, and, well, some, being this game, are pretty wacky. So, this is going to be a long video. There's timestamps for you. Skip to whatever character you would like to have a look at. Although, if you use the timestamps to skip ahead, hey, please leave a like. It does sincerely help the video. And otherwise, let's start and let's go over the roster of characters. Alright, so let's start with Hyde. Hyde is what you would call the protagonist of the game. And he has very much the hero move set. As in... He can throw a fireball. He has the uppercut. So, you know, these kind of things. So on top of, you know, that kind of classic moveset, he's also got pretty serviceable normals. Having a sword helps with that. Also, 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 unlike so many other characters, so many other games, weapons for show, uh, his is not. All of his sword normals specifically do chip damage. Not so much like where he actually will use his feet or something like that, but anything that uses a sword will do chip. So that's a nice little bonus. Now, despite having, you know, that kind of Shoto-ish move set, he can play around a little bit here, especially with the fireballs, because the fireballs have a secondary function in that he can do fun things like detonate them. So when they're already out, you can enter Corticycle Forward and whatever button again, and you can get different results, like say attacking after the fact, or if you want to spend a little meter, you can get a gigantic beam. That's pretty handy. So the fireball game is a little bit more advanced than just tossing the basic projectile, especially because whenever you want, you can just kind of do multiple follow-ups, right? Also, you can do these in the air as well. They detonate in the air and also will change your jump arc momentum. That's very handy. He also has a little bit of a Rekka series in that cortical back, light, medium, or heavy. You can do multiple attacks and multiple follow-ups. And if you do it perfectly with a block string, you can be completely neutral on blocks. So that's very handy and just got a lot of options here. So Hyde's got some stuff to work with. Also, he has many chargeable normals, very handy. And also he has ground pounds. So he can control space in a very non-standard way. So it's not just, you know, fireball uppercut go from there, right? He's got some uh, interesting tricks to work with. Not the least of which. So the force function is a big old sword slash, which you can hold. And if you hold it, it's an overhead, but he has a new version here. He has the X slash, this is down, B and C, the new force function move. And this is also holdable, FYI. Not the least of which here, the X slash completely crushes other fireballs. So if you're looking to win that zoning war by any means necessary, this is a really good tool for it. So if you're looking for, you know, kind of like the classic protagonist move set, you know, the Shoryu, the fireball, but also just a little bit more sass with ground pounds, rekkas, all that kind of stuff, Hyde is that character. Now, Lin, the Ken to Hyde's Ryu, at least you know, as far as story stuff goes, one of the other major important characters of the franchise, and she is a speedster. Her run speed's ridiculous. She has all sorts of crazy mobility and mix up options, and she is just attack, attack, attack. So she has fun things like a roll from her run, which is a very rare trait. She can also do things like double jump. So she has very non-standard movement for the game because the double jump is also a rare trait. This is not universal. Now, as far as that pressure and mix-ups go, things like the down-down series. So down-down B, an overhead, okay. But if you hold the button, oh, it's a low. So tricky to say the least. Uh, this is part of the essence of the character. Also part of the essence of the character is run canceling. So she has, I wouldn't want to call it a full projectile because it doesn't quite go full screen, but cortical forward, A, B, or C. She has her semi projectile and you can cancel it into a run on hit or on block. So it's going to be an issue of, will she commit to a run or not? Hey, who knows? Also a little bit of a wreck of series, cortical back, where you have multiple follow-ups if you so choose to do them. And at any point of between all of these, you can run. So I can do cortical back here and A, and then run cancel that, or I can go for more inputs and then run cancel that. And once again here, hey, who knows when you're actually gonna go in, go for a quick throw, something like that. A uh, strike throw mix for such a fast character, pretty handy. Uh, just a lot of opportunities for pressure, 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 go, go, go. 
You can also substitute some of these out here for hitting medium and heavy at the same time. And instead of the dash, she'll do a dashing attack. So if you're prone to mash to stop her from dashing, you'll instead get blown up by the attack instead. So there's a little bit of a mix there. She can even dash cancel certain attacks from the air. So her projectile is angled in the air. And if you dash cancel after the fact, you'll go for an assault jump afterwards. And just general air mobility too. Like she has a helm splitter style move where she can just say jump backwards or jump forward or whatever you want to do. And she'll advance very far and just come crashing down to the ground with a gigantic swing. She also has a spot dodge as her force function. So if you see something coming, you can just easily dodge out of the way and then go for whatever you would think of as a punish as she has some interesting can follow ups to the spot dodge. But yeah, lots of command normals, lots of held versions of moves, lots of trickiness when it comes to the high low stuff. Lynn, if you just like to attack and go and that's about it, she is really fantastic for that exactly because she's just uh, an aggression based archetype of a character. So if that sounds good, Lynn is that character for you. Waldstein. So just by looking at him, you probably got a good idea where we're going to go with this, right? He's the big boy of the game and so big, he can't even do things like run. He can only dash, right? Uh, mobility limited, although thankfully this is a game with assault, right? So uh, to move around, you're probably going to be doing a lot of the assault. Now, he is indeed our command grab character. So if you like the 360 pile driver, well, he literally is the 360 pile driver character. Also, he has a unique mechanic to him. Uh, if you know about 360s and fighting games and you know that pile driver kind of stuff, he actually has a 720 mechanic. You don't need it for the super or anything. If you do a 720 instead of a 360, you do more damage. See where it says double circle? So if you can just pull that off, you're literally just better for it. So like say 2180 damage versus normally here, it would be 2080 damage. It's not a giant bonus necessarily, but you know, if you can do it, you are rewarded for it. And okay, we're probably looking at these big old claws here and uh, no, they are not for show. Uh, these are the real deal. He's got lots of attacks that utilize these to say the least. Uh, and also many of his claw based attacks and normals actually have a property where they destroy projectiles. Now, obviously big characters in fighting games tend to have issue with, you know, prior balls, projectiles, all that kind of stuff. So he can just literally swap them out of the sky with many of his moves. So that is one very handy trait he has. And also having a decent amount of ways, like if you want to spend some meter to get around them, like his lovely wall slam has some projectile invincibility. So if you catch someone throwing a fireball, you're going to town to say the least. Also, this move, regardless of the version you use, you don't have to use the enhanced version, always corners the enemy. So uh, always leaves up some pretty good pressure. Being a big boy, he has lots of easy sources of plus frames. So if you get the enemy to block certain moves, okay, now you blocked. I have frame advantage and now start guessing the old grab game, right? That's kind of how that works. And also speaking of the grab game, he does have his B grab. So the command grab here, there's multiple versions. The A version is basically the one you think of, right? The B version has ridiculous range, although the B version has what we call a yellow tech window, meaning you can break it, right? But if people are asleep at the wheel or if they're overly shielding or whatever, it's an option to grab someone from very far away. Also, just to finish off the grab, the C version is full invincible. So if you're looking for invincibility and just like a lot of extra dunks on people, it's a pretty wood, just decent way to go about it. Also new to the game. So he has his force function, which is a projectile, right? But a force function being what it is, drains your grid to use it. So, you know, not necessarily always what you're looking for, but he has a proper projectile now, ish. He has a big old ground pound, which causes a big old shockwave, which you can charge by the way. And it's now a way for him to contest space from full screen that he didn't really have before other than just relying on the force function. So if people are playing keep away, it's a nice little way to say, hey, don't forget I'm here because I can smash the ground really hard. So Wald, he's exactly what you think. He's the big slow grappler, big buttons, slow moves, all that kind of stuff. You probably already know if you like this archetype or not. Uh, and Wald is a very good example of this archetype. So if you want that big boy grappler experience, he is definitely your character. Now, Hilda. So Hilda, 
we went from Waltzine, our big boy grappler. She is the zoner of zoners. Even her normals are sort of zoning buttons. And by that, I mean like, you know, light, medium, heavy, right? Uh, here's charge heavy. That's an overhead, by the way. Yeah. This is an overhead, right? That's just a normal, full screen overhead normal. Why not? So as a zoner, got some really good zoning options. Very quick beam style. And this is also air okay, by the way. And uh, the one thing about it, it is duckable, but if you do the air version, well, then you're not ducking that. Also, if you're looking to throw some air beams, she can freely teleport afterwards just to gain space. So that's really handy and also really handy. Things like ground pounds. We got pillars here. Whichever button you choose is the spacing you will get. And also as far as other projectiles go, say the dragon punch motion, big old spike, but you know, okay, that's cool. Bounces. But if it came from behind you and bounced you all the way on the other end of the screen, then I get a combo. Pretty handy. Also, because the train's not stopping here, we have negative edge projectiles. So you saw me hit jab there, right? Now, if I let go of jab, boom. And uh, light, medium, heavy, ABC, the negative edge, where you hold the button for a moment, then let go, will determine where these projectiles drop. And these projectiles are also all overheads, by the way. So uh, she can be very tricky on the mix, to say the least. So if you're looking to control space, this is a very safe bet for you with all the projectiles we mentioned. Once again, the normals here, like this is crouch heavy. Pretty good range, right? Also uh, new to this version of the game, we have new super force functions here like this tracking projectile. So quarters will go back B and C together and she'll drop this puddle and it'll do its best to track the enemy. And when it gets to wherever the enemy is, we'll have multiple pillars erupt from the ground. Also very good on say the super front. She catches you whiffing anything. She has a full screen super. So you gotta watch out for that. Uh, she can hold you hostage a little bit if she has the appropriate bar, because uh, this is full screen and it is very fast. So if you like big beams, air beams, pillars, weird space control elements that just eat up a lot of the screen. You like those teleport gimmicks where you can just be on any side of the screen you want and run away or chase down the enemy, all that kind of stuff. If you just like the element of screen control in general, Hilda's really good at it. Uh, she can be a very frustrating uh, character to fight if you're good at the whole zoning and space control thing. And if you like that, this is that character for you. Okay, Sarugi, he's one of our newcomers to Undernight in Birth 2. And he's pretty simple. He's a pretty strong beginner character as uh, he's, well, he's just very straightforward. So the shield is the main event. Okay, the shield is not for show. That's the main event. But besides that, he just kind of just runs in there and stays in there. So he has very easy Rekka series, Corsica forward A, B or C. And from there, he has either follow ups or he can go for an overhead if he's feeling cheeky. He has a standard defensive reversal, just a big old uppercut. He does have a command grab ish. It does have the yellow break window specifically. Even the enhanced version does have a break timing to it. So basically you're either meant to use it in combos where it is truly unbreakable or to catch people shielding and then go from there. Handy trait about it though, is it is indeed combo okay. So after you get the grab going, you can follow up. So that works out. But let's talk the force function, B and C together, the shield. So this is kind of the deal here. So as you may expect, just from the uh, graphics going on here, this is a very defensive move. Try as you might. While I got the shield up, your attacks are not exactly going through, right? That's the benefit of having a six foot tall shield. So what's the weakness then if there is one? Well, uh, it doesn't deal with lows so good. As you can see there, it says barrier breached and you can still get thrown something fierce. But it's more than just the raw defensive state, which is handy. You also have multiple attacks and multiple options from it. So I have a basic shield charge, which is good. You can also cancel into a leaping attack, which puts you in the jump state. And you can actually do air normals from it after the fact. Very, very handy. And also you can just slide down on the ground like a crazy person. And you can also dash cancel it. You can also freely dash cancel out of it. One way or the other. If you four dash, you'll remain in the stance after the fact. But yeah, basically, while the enemy is doing basically anything other than a low or a throw, you can safely guard through it and attack them on the other end with a variety of other options. For Sarugi, basically the key to a good offense is having a good defense. 
This is why the character is just like 90% shield, because you're going to want to use that shield and all the interesting properties out of it. Other than that, I think it's a very interesting and easy to use character for the most part. Just a interesting gimmick, if you will. So if you just want to like get in, stay in, and bonk people on the head with a shield, Tsurugi is that guy. Now, Elnum is just a really interesting grab bag of lots of different properties. So for one, she has a big old wire. I don't know what the proper term for this is, but you can hit people with it, it brings them in. Also, specifically on block, if you go for like C, hold C, it's advantage on block. Very handy while bringing them in. But just a lot of other weird properties, like she has air control. So if you neutral jump, you can hold forward or backwards in the air. And it's very useful in all the ways you think it would be. She has oddball things like a jumping command grab. It's a true command grab. You can't block this. And also, well, you might notice there's the bullets, right? Because uh, she can go bah, 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 and burn those bullets on you while shooting you. And underneath those bullets, bullet mechanic, I, I think you might intuitively understand that, right? You need bullets, you shoot your bullets, reload your bullets. What's this Gears of War looking thing here at the bottom? Yes, she has active reload, just like Gears of War. And while you have active reload up, your bullets are flashing. Your bullets have more frame advantage. They do more damage. They're just better all around. So when you're looking for your buddy Dom to take on the Locust, maybe uh, consider bringing Eltnam in for the ride. So just quick example here. So uh, the basic gunshots by themselves are just fantastic pokes. They're not necessarily full screen. Although if you hold the button while you're doing it, she'll do trick shots that cover multiple different angles. So if you're looking for a more heavy screen presence, that will work on obviously each one costs a bullet. But yeah, just very strong poke in and of itself. And the thing here is, so this is just quartz go forward light, right? So it's negative three on block, right? So if I have my active reload up here, I shoot my special bullet. Now it's plus one on block. So once again here, the gunshots are just better if you have your special bullets ready. And she also has multiple kinds of gunshots. She can also shoot down on the ground here. Uh, depending on the button you press is how many bullets you'll burn. And other things like she has a proper uh, reversal, an uppercut style move, if you will. And a uh, new to this version of the game, her cortical back series, which is more wire hits. If you hold cortical back B specifically, it actually turns it into a command grab. So it is a techable style of command grab. But while you're doing various strings, uh, especially if you're abusing plus frames with your bullets and all that kind of stuff, and people are doing a lot of shielding, you can use this to catch some shielding and rip them into the wall. It's a bounce. You do indeed have potential to combo after the fact, even though I dropped it because that's how this works, right? But yeah, so she now has a ranged command grab that's new as of this version of the game. So Eldum has very interesting space control, very non-standard styles of moves, uh, non-standard styles of air movement as well, and uh, just a really good grab bag of fun aspects of fighting games. And of course, she has a gun. And it's always fun to have a character with a gun in a game where guns are not normal, especially with the cool, perfect reload mechanic. Akatsuki. So at the very beginning, we talked about Hyde and how he's the Shoto and all that. Actually, Akatsuki is like the most showed. He is the most Street Fighter character in this game. He is the karate man of everybody. Because, yo, he's got the fireball. He's got the uppercut. And his uppercut's a down, down uppercut. It's not forward, down, down, forward. So it's a little bit quicker to get out and a lot easier to catch people trying to cross you up. So that's really handy. And uh, even though I don't mean this as an insult, but he has Dan Kyaku, right? He has Dan's kicks, basically. So... He is straightforward karate man. And one of the things that really helps him out in this version of the game specifically, like, you know, he has the air fireball and all that. But in this version, he can also hold the fireball. So slight delay and it becomes multiple hits. And when it's multiple hits, well, it's just that much easier to win the fireball war and all that kind of stuff, right? So that is new to this version of the game. Very handy. Also, being a bit more of a Street Fighter character, I guess you could say, he also cannot run. He can only forward dash. It's not that big of a deal, but it is noticeable in the game where pretty much everyone else except for Waldstein can run. So he's a little vanilla compared to some of the other characters. Because once again, he's kind of fulfilling Karate Man role. But don't worry, it comes with the upside of Karate Man. In that he has the parry and everyone loves their parries. So he has high parry and low parry. This is his force function. And if you catch something, you blast them on the other side. 
It's really that simple, right? So down gets lows and mids, high gets uh, highs and mids. Everything gets mids basically, right? And you just smack them. And it's frame one, so you can do it through any gap and just through anything. Now, when it comes to like stuff like projectiles, you can still parry those as well. You don't necessarily get the automatic follow-up because, you know, it's not a physical attack, but you can still do it. Although he has a new force function. So quarter circle forward, B and C. This is a metered parry and a metered parry. Well, he can get just about everything. So this will trigger off pretty much every attack and he will rush forward and smack the enemy. Uh, depending on how far away, it might not be a true punish or not. The closer you are, the better chance it's a punish. But basically, it gives him an opportunity to parry things from much further out at the cost of some meter. Also, a benefit of this specific parry is it is indeed combo okay. You get hits after the fact as well, so the damage can really start racking up. Now, he is given a few little traits here, like he is one of the few characters allowed to double jump. So that is something, right? It'll help with that mobility. Uh, and other than that, he's very straightforward. Like, if you're looking to play Karate Man and an otherwise crazy anime fighting game, well, Akatsuki is Karate Man in an anime fighting game. So Kaguya is the shotgun wife. These giant guns here ain't for show. Let's put it that way, right? Want a big old beam? We got it for you. You want like a beam wrecker where you can shoot multiple shots? Sure, why not? Run heavy, a full screen beam that bounces off the wall? Sure. Want to have these weird bouncing projectiles to help with like screen control and all that kind of stuff? Hey, yep. Yeah. If you got guns, you might as well use them is what I'm trying to say. Even things like her uh, force function is actually an invincible spot dodge. So say zoning, hey, you can dodge it, attacks, you can dodge it. Also, the beauty here is you have follow-ups from it. So after you do it, you can shoot someone back, whatever you dodge, eat lead after the fact. Also, big thing with the guns, right? You want to look cool while doing it. Down forward C, just a command normal, but has a lot of options from it. Uh, you can switch sides with the enemy. You can attack with uh, multiple lows after the fact. Uh, you can just kind of shoot those uh, loaded bouncing projectiles as well. Gives you a lot of cool options. On that note, she has a command air dash. So uh, it's not quite the assault. You can assault and still do this after the fact. Doesn't do anything in and of itself. As you can see, it passed through the enemy. But if they're already being comboed, then... Well, it's a hit. And when you start putting all these various traits I've talked about together, you can get some pretty silly looking stuff. So yeah, you can kind of put some sassy stuff together, right? Uh, not even necessarily the most optimal combo, but it looks cool. Uh, and uh, yes, also, by the way, here, uh, we did the Rekka series. That's the light version of our gunshots versus the medium versions, like the actual proper beams, FYI. But yeah, uh, certainly a stylish character. Once again, this is one of the new characters of the franchise, and I think she's a worthy addition. I think for some people, you look at this character, you can already tell one way or the other if it's a character for you. We'll put that out there as it stands. But you know, she can shoot the sky and make the sky explode. That, that's cool enough for me, I guess. Kaguya's pretty all right. So Mika, if for whatever reason you forgot you were playing an anime fighting game, she'll drag you back to reality really quick. Because she's the little girl with the giant robot arms. And she is turbo rush down character. Even down to something as simple as like run heavies and overhead, run mediums a low, right? So she's going to get in there and mix, mix, mix. Not the least of which is she's part werewolf in that. She has a very werewolf aligned move. Let's put it that way. So she has the Mika missile where she'll just fling herself at the enemy. So straightforward if you use the light version. Angled if you use the medium versions. And the thing is, you can hit the move again in any of the eight core directions and a button, and you'll just go exactly in that direction. So it could be backwards. Say you're getting your stuff blocked. Cool, I want to peace out. I don't want to commit to anything, right? You can do exactly that. So you can go backwards, you can go forwards, you can go straight up if you want. You can also work in any angles you want, and it can also help to be a fair bit tricky here as you can like wind up on the other side and try to cross them up, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, it's just pressure, 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 go, go, go. She also has fun things like a peckable, it has the gold flash, hop grab. So this by itself, obviously it's not like your main grappler thing, but since there are gonna be so much like gimmicks and all that kind of stuff with all sorts of flying around with the Mika missile, anyone who wants to shield, the second they shield incorrectly, you can hop grab them, get a big punish. She actually does have a true command grab, like a 360. 
It is metered only though, so you have to spend half your bar if you want to get it, but it's true, it's inescapable out of the gate. So if you're just looking for that quick little extra bit of damage, it is there for you. Like many characters, she has some charged normals. Hers are a bit more flashy though, I would say. Uh, just a lot more impact than some of the other characters. Also interesting in things like uh, BB, she has a bit of like an Iron Man repulsor blast. And it's also super delayable. So if you want to mess up people's uh, timings when it comes to like block strings and all that. On that note, one of her new moves here, down, down, and then attack button, the Mika impact. So it's just a big old swing, safe-ish, but you have the follow up where you hit the button again and she'll just, well, blast you. So if the opponent is looking to steal a turn back or something, this says, no, nah, it was still my turn. You shouldn't have hit a button. Now the follow up is not safe on block. So you got to really call him out on that, but still it's more really strong stagger pressure and pressure once again here is definitely the name of the game with this character. So if you just want to go in, stay in, attack, 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 pressure, 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 like just non-stop rushdown, Mika is definitely that character on top of being, you know, silly anime girl. Laundreki, yeah, so he's uh, our Sub-Zero analogous character, if you will. Why? Because he throws ice at you and, well, more specifically, he can freeze you, right? So, sort of works out. Uh, specifically, he has a mechanic here. If we look below his health, he has a little crystal here, ice crystal. If he gets primed with an ice-based special attack, the next ice-based special attack will freeze you. Simple enough. And while you're frozen, you, well, you can't block or anything, right? So you can just get hit with anything. You can easily convert basically anywhere on the screen. So don't get frozen. And with that, uh, he has, you know, very serviceable projectile game. Uh, he has a little bit of an ice laser game and new to this version of uh, Undernighted in Birth, if you hold the uh, down, down and whatever attack button it may be for the ice laser, you can actually make it appear at different points in the screen, giving you another interesting element of screen control. So that's really cool. He has uh, a lot of very serviceable normals here, like Stan B has got some good range, has a good follow up, which wall bounces. Stan C also has good range. He has back C, which is amazing because it's very disjointed. The part where you hit him is him, right? The big ice pillar you cannot hit. So he's retreating while he has a giant follow up. Also the move has a follow up, which is a big old overhead crystal. That's cool. He also has an interesting record series where you can begin the attack with quarter circle forward, like medium heavy and you can get all sorts of different follow ups. And the beauty here is you can actually charge them to have different properties. So the A version is a true low and must be blocked crouching, whereas the C version charge is an overhead, must be blocked standing, and you can mix and match. So I can go held low into the overhead into another low. Low, overhead, low. So suffice to say, if you're looking just to trick people up on block, it's a pretty good way to do it. Also, just many interesting normals, like a command normal forward and B. Even if you block this, it is like, almost plus 30 on block. So you can just pressure, pressure, pressure. If you know they're just gonna be passed for a second, you can do this and then solidify your next turn effectively. Also things like jumping down forward and B. Uh, what's really cool about this is as soon as you press it, it kills all your air momentum, right? So if you're in a jump, it kills your jump on the spot. So you can do basically jump pressure from very low to the ground. Uh, it is also holdable. So uh, at bare minimum, easy plus frames. But basically the main uh, benefit here is just changing your jump arc. Uh, anytime in any fighting game where you can mess with your jump arcs, that's always very handy. And this gives them the option to do exactly that. Defensively, very easy. His force function is literally just a reversal, right? And it has a follow up if it connects. So you don't have to think twice. You don't have to do motions. Just hit B and C at the same time. You get the fastest possible reversal. So defensively, that definitely works out for him. But yeah, just a suite of pretty respectable normals. Pretty respectable projectiles with a lot of different weird angles and go with like the lasers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, mix up Rekka game. Just, he's got a really good grab bag of options. So if you're looking to be a big icy boy, if you want to get your Sub-Zero, you know, quest on an anime style, complete with ice crucifixions, uh, Londrekia is that character. Now, Byakia is an interesting character. Like one, he's got an amazing range of normals. His normals are ridiculous. They're just very huge, very long range. He has a lot of screen control basically going on is what I'm trying to say here. His normals are very good, but his game plan is very different than what you might expect. He is what we call a trap character. So you notice that little spider web there, right? And uh, if they go into the spider web, 
Well, sure as sugar, right? Spiderweb is going to detonate on them. And he can plant these at all points on the screen. Uh, very much, you know, that's kind of what he's aiming for as a character, right? He's very tricky in that way. He even has uh, directional throw, so he can throw you into the traps if you get thrown, right? But many of these styles of characters over the years that have these uh, trap game plans, if you will, they are what we call trap zoners. Like, the trap is there to frustrate you while they're throwing projectiles. Byakia is trap rush down. Because uh, he, on top of the fantastic normal suite, as we mentioned earlier, has just a lot of tools to help pressure you. Like, just to give you an example here, I'll jump backwards. Were you expecting the block low there? Probably not, right? When he's like at the top of the screen laying traps, that's generally not the point where you think, oh, I better block low, but that's exactly the kind of shenanigans he can pull off, right? So the trap itself, you can have multiples on the same time. The air version and the ground version count as different moves. So that works out when it comes to like the screen control aspect. You can also hold the button and he can do various things out of it. So like here, if I just do quarter circle back and A and hold it, he'll then go into a bit of a command jump here and I can do various attacks out of it. So if there's already a trap on the screen, he'll do his best to go near the trap. So if he's say, ahead of it, he'll jump backwards to it. And much the same here, the aerial version also has various jumping attacks you can do from it. And depending on which button you press, these are the options you'll wind up getting. Now on top of that, he does have a bit of a Rekka series, which is very handy. He also has effectively a command grab. It's not quite a command grab, but what it is, is unblockable. So we can see here, enemy is set to guard all, and they'll do their best to guard everything, sure enough. But my Dragon Punch motion move here, if it passes through the enemy, tough, he got got. And also, uh, you can follow up and get combo ability after the fact, so that's really handy. And depending on the button you press, he has different ranges he can work from. So it can be tricky. If you're just a little overly passive, he'll get you. So stand still too much, he gets you. If you risk going forward, you're walking into the spider's web, as it were, right? So he has a very interesting game plan to work with. Also new to this version of the game, he has a round pound. So down, down, light, medium, and heavy. And he can control different aspects of the screen as well. So he doesn't just necessarily have to work his way in. If you want to just kind of play a little lame, you can play a little lame. So if you're in the market for a weird little spidery boy, very much in the whole spider motif, as you can tell, right? Uh, with a very non-standard trap-based game plan, then Bakia, well, he's exactly what the doctor ordered. Now, Batista, you're in for a treat if you don't already know. Uh, <laughs> so little anime girl, Guile, I guess you could say, right? So she has charge motions, right? You know, hold back, hit forward. And then depending on your button strength, you know, sonic boom, right? And also much the same here, hold down, hit up and attack, flash kick. Oh, okay, well, you, you know where this is going. Or do you? Or do you know where this is going? So also uh, much the same in the air, it can toss projectiles in the air, it can charge in the air. Cool. But let me show you a different way to charge, one that might uh, scare you a little bit. You know all about, you know, charge back, hit forward, hit button. What if I charge forward and then hit back in a button? What about that? Because that's the thing in this game. So instead of, you know, a projectile, how about just a full screen beam if I hold forward and hit back? Interesting, right? How much the same here? Hold forward, say I do in the air. I can get air beams as well, right? So you kind of have to unlearn, depending on how old you are like I am, you know, up to like, 30 plus years of knowledge, but this is something you can do in this game. You can charge forward and hit back and that also gives you a move. And if we do that for forward, what about down? And yes, my friends, charging up and then hitting down in a button gives you a dive kick for Batista. So she's the ultimate charge character. She can do the charges you've known for all your life, but she can also do weird forward to back charges. She can do up two down charges and just kind of helps with the whole zoning and screen control aspect of her character. And also she has negative edge, hold any button, let go of a button and she'll toss out a gem. And if you hit that gem, it explodes. And you know, say I'm a little bit of a jerk here. I'm going to do it on your wake up, right? And you have to worry about these explosions all that happening as you're waking up. So she can just hold a button, let go and anywhere on the screen, air okay as well. She can toss out her crystal. She can have multiple on the screen at the same time and just gives her an element of additional screen control. 
And for some fun other things, she has some really wacky normals here like Crouch B, Crouch BBB is giant gigantic ball. If you backdash while you're in the air, well then you're levitating while you're in the air and she can do all of her specials from here as well. So she can zone you out from basically the top of the screen. New to this version of the game, she has charge back forward B and C together. And she basically just detonates the sun above your head, shoots out multiple layers of beams, and once again, really good screen control. She also has Concordia down A and B at the same time, and by itself, is a big shield, it's a big barrier, and works the way you hope, so you can like delete attacks, delete projectiles, all that kind of stuff. But it's also a stance as well, so while you're in it, you can hit a direction and a button, and depending on the direction, depending on the button, you can do all of her charge moves without having the charge. So that's actually very, very handy, very, very cool. And this is across the board here. It doesn't really matter what it is. You can be tossing crystals, because that's technically charging negative edge. It can even be your flash kick. Just hit up and the appropriate button and you'll get the flash kick instead, right? So it lets you do all the charge moves without charging and also gives you a good defensive measure. So it's very interesting like that. Also, while you're shooting all these grand lasers, if you want to hit them with the finger guns, that is her force function. So, a very interesting character to say the least. I remember years ago when I first saw this character, I'm like, what? Huh? Because forward charging and up charging are very foreign concepts to most fighting game players. But if you're willing to dip your toes in and try it out, uh, the attacks are appropriately very powerful, right? Because this beam has like no travel time. It just hits. So uh, as far as like a projectile goes, yeah, it's pretty strong. So if you're looking for a zoner style character in more of the charge flavor, Batista is definitely that character and in a very interesting and non-standard way for fighting games. Gordo, do you want to be a big purpley scythe boy? Well, Gordo's that character. I'm going to throw this out here right now. Right? This is another with the game, but Gordo's track has always been my favorite in this game. Uh, in the franchise, it's always had outstanding music. He has my single favorite track, his character theme. So hey, Go YouTube it or something. But yeah, so Gordo, he is uh, very much a ranged character. Like this is just stand heavy, right? Uh, and plays very well. If you want to say charge stand heavy, it becomes an overhead. And well, he plays well from a range. Most characters can't combo you from this far away, right? Gordo, you know, for him, that's just Tuesday, right? He can totally do it. Uh, the range is very real on Gordo. Also, as you would expect with scythe moves, I guess this is just how fighting games work. Many of the scythe moves just bring you in. Uh, ever since Zaslamel and Soul Calibur, I guess, that's kind of a trait of scythe users in fighting games. Also, for a character, you know, with like such titanic normals, such titanic moves, you may not expect it, but he also is a command grab character. Now, it's not as flashy as, say, wall scene or anything, but one of the things about it is he does drain uh, the grid meter from the enemy. So every time he successfully command grabs you, He'll gain just a little bit of grid and you will lose a little bit of grit. It's not titanic damage or anything, right? Because that's just the nature of the beast. You can't really combo it after the fact, but it is there. So it's just an interesting tool for a uh, archetype, you know, big normals character that normally wouldn't have such a thing. Also speaking on grabs, you can hold down while he's doing his regular throw and I'll actually leave the enemy in a combo okay state in front of you. And from there, you can just kind of dream up whatever you can dream up. He also has a lot of interesting traits like the down down series of special moves down down light just gives you absurd plus frames down down b more combo fodder don't do it point blank this is a very negative on block but yeah so interesting series uh, it's force function just a gigantic effectively full screen poke it'll whiff at like absolute max screen but about 80 percent of the screen away it'll always connect it is duckable but if you're just looking to you know grab out and reach someone it's a good way to do it and this is also advantage on block, by the way. Not too much else to say. He's, he's very straightforward, big normals character, pretty easy to use, a pretty easy game plan, and he's stylish and cool, right? So if you like all these things that are mentioned here, if you like scythe users especially, because I know there's a special breed of people who just absolutely love size, right? He is that character. Carmine is a bit different. So you may notice from, you know, all the red, all the vampire-y style looks. Maybe he's some kind of vampire-y style of person. And uh, he is in that health is his main resource. And, well, it is for everyone, I guess. But I mean this literally. 
because he can toss out weapons and all sorts of stuff that cost him his health. And you may have noticed there, well, what's this little piece of business on the ground there? That doesn't look too healthy. Well, many of his attacks, his specials, leave this little blood puddle on the ground, and you can use that as a follow-up. Like, say here, I have a pillar-style special move, and if I call it... Oh, well, there we go. That's interesting, isn't it? So the pillar where I called it, and also a pillar where the blood puddle is. And this is kind of how many of the moves work, where you can toss out either a base projectile, and his base projectile, by the way, is just forward B. It's not even a special move, technically. And this will leave a puddle, and then other moves you call in can activate the puddle and also leave their own puddle, right? And it's all just a big flowing dynamic like this. You do another special, and it'll do whatever it's going to do, and also activate whatever puddles may be left behind. So it's very interesting in that way. And also many of the special moves on top of them doing their thing, they'll leave another puddle for you. So you are draining your own health continuously while this is happening, but you're also setting up a very unique style of offense that a lot of the characters simply have no real match to. So just to go through it, uh, 4B base projectile leaves a puddle. If you hold it, it becomes an anti-air that also leaves a puddle. Uh, quarter circle forward series is like a big Jetta pinwheel that leaves a puddle when it's done. And when you activate its puddle form, it's another big wheel. Each special move that leaves a puddle generally has its own puddle explosion attached to it as well, if you do the move again. Corsicle Back series is a big old slam, and if you leave it rock, it's just basically a big old pillar. If you hold it, it'll leave a puddle, and it's negative edge. So when you hold it and then let go of the button is when then it'll kind of fly up and detonate. And as we mentioned here, we have a pillar series here. So generally the strength of your button is where the pillar will be. It'll also leave a puddle. And when you call a pillar, it'll call another pillar wherever the puddle is, and then leave a new pill, uh, puddle, man, I'm talking in circle. Puddle, pillar, puddle, blah, blah, blah. And I'm gonna leave this in, I don't care. That's just how this works. Anyways, when you put a pillar up, it leaves a puddle. And when you call a pillar, the puddle will also become a pillar. So puddly pillars for all. Now, all these moves that drain all your health, you know, obviously not good for your health, right? Every time you leave a puddle, you're going to lose the health. But thankfully, in a bit of a vampiric nature, whenever you throw the enemy, you will gain a little bit of health back. So that definitely works in your favor. He also has a command grab, metered only, so it'll take a half your meter. But if you get it off, it'll give you a substantial amount of your health back. So it's certainly something to aim for. Now, the thing about health as well, um, it can't kill you any of these moves that take health. So even if you are getting low, at that point, you might as well go for broke because there's just no real way you're going to get uh, killed for it because it can't kill you. Also, keep in mind, if you space it out correctly, you can actually have multiple puddles going at the same time. So you can control a lot of the screen. As for what's new for him this time around, he has a run force function attack and it's just a giant screen controlling boot. And if you hold it, the attack gets even bigger. He has a new string, just BBB. And the final hit is also a command grab. It's techable command grab, but it is there. So you can kind of open people up if they're asleep at the wheel while they're blocking. So that's really handy. And they also gave him what is effectively like a dive kick style of move, just jumping down forward and C. And if you hold it, the attack will be just a little bit bigger, a little bit better. He's the kind of character where his big super is called you shit. This is the end. So, you know, a little sassy on the guy, right? But yeah, so if you like this very unique mechanic where the health is just as important as anything else you're doing, where you're burning health for big dividends, because his pressure, like almost everything he does is plus on block, right? Every time you block just about anything he's going to do, it's his turn. And even if it rarely isn't, if there's a puddle up, the next thing you do is going to detonate the puddle, and then it's his turn anyways, right? So... Uh, he will burn himself out in a lot of ways, but there's big payoffs because it's always his turn almost. He controls uh, the screen in a really weird and fun way. And it's just a very interesting way to go about being a fighting game character. Now, our boy Chaos. No, it's Chaos. I'm playing around. But uh, you probably notice something's up kind of out of the gate, right? Because he's got a big old lizard dog dinosaur following him. So Chaos is our pet character naturally enough. And the pet character doing well, the pet character thing means the pet character, he's awful vicious. And uh, there's a lot of ways to control him. Uh, not 
standard, I guess you could say, but well, no puppet character standard really. Um, you can hold buttons to make uh, your little buddy retreat or go forward, and you can also have him stay in place. And while he's not active, he can't be hit. Only when he's uh, active can he be hit. And if he gets hit, well, he goes away, and then you just resummon him. Now, what can your buddy do? Well, a lot. Cortical Forward series, where he just kind of charges forward easily enough. Uh, DP series, where you'll spin with the tail, also holdable. So he can go for, like, the hurricane kick, but with his tail. And this is the part I should mention here. Whatever the buddy's doing, whatever they're doing, you can freely do anything you want. You're not held in place while the pet is doing their moves. So this means you can get extra tricky with a lot of things. Your handy pet friend also can toss out projectiles. Of course, go back and hold it. If you do it regularly, it's just one projectile. If you hold it, it's multiple projectiles. Also, the force function now gives him some interesting attacks, like flame breath that is effectively just about full screen. And if you hit down as well, he'll pull a little bit of a Vega from Street Fighter. He'll hit the other wall, bounce off it, and attack you from the other end of things. You can even send little buddy out on sneak attack missions where he'll just kind of leave the screen and start moving his way forward concealed and then attacking after the fact. So any pet character, any fighting game, they're going to be more complex. That's just how that works. You're going to need a bigger brain than usual because... You're not just playing, you know, the character you're actually playing, right? You have to worry about another separate character. So if you're looking for that layer of tricky, just that layer of advanced play, you know, controlling the pet while also doing your own thing, trying to rush down and mix up the enemy, this is absolutely that character. Besides, everyone loves to have a big old lizard, dog, hound, beast. I'm not actually sure what the creature is, but I'll say he's certainly a creature. That's what I'll say about it. Now, Enkidu's an odd duck. So, just by the look, you can tell he's like very much deadly serious martial arts man. And like, his range, his presence is like, here. That's it. Uh, he has no real way to contest anything at any point in the screen. He's not particularly that fast. Um, the one thing is he hits hard. He hits like a truck. And he's got uh, immensely good stagger pressure, which is very much helped by the fact he has a unique mechanic that only exists for him and nobody else, the Havoc mechanic. So for basically anything that's not a light attack, so mediums, heavy, specials, all that kind of stuff, if you catch someone on like the recovery frames of a move, it can either be through a counter hit or just like an actual legitimate punish of the move, you'll trigger the Havoc effect. So you see I hit him with counter and look on the right side of the screen where it says Havoc. So what is Havoc? So for one Havoc, it's just extra damage. It's applied like as like kind of like a, a DOT, if you will, after the initial hit, just a little bit extra damage, but also more frame advantage. So say Stan Heavy Punch is the example here. When we have it triggered with Havoc, you can see here my advantage is zero versus if I just hit him while he's walking forward, it's negative 12 on hit. So it adds a substantial amount of frame advantage in every hit on top of whatever damage you may not otherwise be doing. And this is where this comes into play because a lot of his special moves and regular moves even are super delayable. So he has like a chain. It's just B, 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 C, 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 right? And don't do that all in block all at once. But uh, each of these, you can like very much delay the hits in between all these and just like do them regular timing, a bit slow. Like try to bait out various moves. Much the same here is the Rekka series, quarter circle forward and like medium or heavy. So after the initial hit, you can uh, go for a follow up, but you can also do the follow up, you know, kind of slow. See if they want to hit a button after the fact. You're going to get some big rewards. I'll give you an example here. So if we go for the Rekka here and we stagger the second hit, if we had the second hit connect by itself, it's just going to be negative four, right? On hit. Nothing to write home about. Let's say they try to mash out and hit buttons while we're doing this because, you know, we're trying to stagger everything, right? Then all of a sudden, ooh, plus 27? Like, uh, significant, I would say the least, right? So if we catch a mash in here uh, with the Havoc bonus here, it depends on when you catch them all, like I said, this is plus 33, right? You can kind of do whatever you want to do. You can link into whatever hits here, um, say, like, uh, the heavy chain. So if we got our stagger going on here, catch him, then, then we can just go into the whole shebang, right? And uh, this is very much applicable to uh, a lot of his moveset. 
that you're allowed to stagger so many moves, either basic strings or the specials themselves with the Rekkas. You're just trying to fish out and catch a counter hit because your counter hit with Enkidu, due to the Havoc mechanic, is worth more than any other character's because you get so much more out of it. And of course, he's more than just the mechanic, right? That's obviously a pretty big part of the character, lets him hit hard. But, you know, for a character, you know, that's kind of slow, no presence, he has ways to get around projectiles. That's always very helpful. Back heavy, specifically, very good on multiple levels. One, it also can destroy projectiles. Uh, it's chargeable as well, and the charge version can destroy multiple projectiles. It also moves him backwards a fair bit, so it can help him avoid moves, like even here, like point blank, right? We avoided uh, Hyde's Crouch A. So when you're fishing for Havoc attacks and that counter, it's a pretty good way to do it because you'll move deceptively far back during whatever string you're doing and then come forward and attack. And for players that are just a bit too passive, he has moves like Down Down, uh, Light Medium Heavy series that can actually give them advantage frames, also are chargeable as well. So we can just make sure it's still your turn if they just don't want to play along. As befitting of a martial arts master, he also has a counter stance. So if someone's coming at you with some really obvious offense, you can just up C Daisy and flip them over your head. New to this version of the game, he also has a 360 command grab. Uh, it is EX only, so you do have to spend meter, FYI. And it is techable, but it'll still grab people shielding and all that kind of stuff. But if they're not expecting it, they're not expecting it, all right? Also very handy with a wall bounce, so you can get some decent combos going, get some uh, appreciable damage out. And yes, he does have a dive kick as well. So, you know, watch out for that. Also new to this version of the game, uh, forward BC, new force function. It is basically, if you hold it, a bit of an auto parry stance. And when you let go, blast the enemy with an elbow and send them flying. Also, the move is special cancelable as well. So you can go into whatever special of your choice and get comboing following up once you get your guaranteed hit in. So yeah, a very different style of character, all about fishing for the punish or the counter hit. So he can trigger his unique mechanic, give you insane frame advantage, and then get big combos they know other characters could only dream of. So um, maybe not the most beginner friendly character because you kind of have to know what you're doing, what you're looking at uh, to make sure you can either appropriately counter or stagger out the enemy with your uh, various forms of pressure and your various normals, right? But very cool, very different. So if you're in the market for a uh, crazy kick punch man that does things not the usual way, then Enkidu is that guy. All right, Wagner. So Wagner is interesting in that you may notice two icons below the health. One is a sword, the other is a shield. And hey, funnily enough, we got a sword and we got a shield, right? So Wagner has buffs and simple, just down, down, light, down, down, medium. One buffs the sword, one buffs the shield. And while the buffs are active, well, this is the kind of character where things start going online for something basic. If I got the sword buff live, all of a sudden, all my sword normals start doing chip. So it's specifically the sword normals, so like kicks and stuff, not so much. But if it's the sword and glowing us on fire, you better believe there's going to be a little chip damage associated with it. Much the same. If I have the shield buff live, all of my shield normals will now also do chip damage. Although there's much less shield normals than sword normals, FYI, right? But yeah, so on a base level, okay, that's cool. But... What the big deal here is both these buffs really enhance the various moves she has. So let's take, say, cortical forward, light, medium, heavy, right? It's a big drill attack. It says neutral, what's that? I'm just going to skip that part. I don't do neutral, right? I'm just going to get in. And also it has follow-ups. Great. But the thing is, the drill by itself, okay, it's a little negative, And the follow-up is very negative, right? So don't do that. Unless our pal, the sword buff, shows up here. And then all of a sudden... Now that cancel we do here, our second attack, it consumes the buff because it lets you be air okay after the fact. So we can take a punish into a situation where we would die into, no, we're going to keep attacking and uh, we're going to be plus at best and you might get bopped in the head and die at worst, right? So now this turns us into super ignorant attack, like I don't need to play the game because my buff is here, my buff will carry me through and I'll just go, go, go. Much in the same vein, Wagner has a shield charge move. This quarter circle backlight medium heavy. And while the shield buff is live, this move now has a guard point, meaning the shield will effectively block whatever move would normally knock her out of it and will keep attacking. 
As you can see here, tank through the hit just fine. So while you have this up, it doesn't happen frame one necessarily, first possible frame, but very early on into whatever attack here using the shield, you'll just be able to literally tank it because you're using the shield and knock the enemy on their butt. Also shield charge, by the way, very literally knocks them on the butt, like in a very fun and happy combo okay way. So if you can bulldog your way through a move and hit with the shield, you're gonna get a fair bit of damage coming your way. Wagner also has a dive kick style move where once again, you just kind of say, I don't want to deal with neutral, just work your way in. And this one also has a follow-up as well. If you hit the button again, and just like before, if you have the sword buff up when you do the follow-up, then instead of having a recovery, you just recover in the air and you can just keep going attack, 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 and not really pay attention to, you know, the usual rules of fighting games. And just to keep things a little fun and frustrating, say there are situations where you are a little negative and you don't have one of your buffs to cover it, Wagner also has a proper full invincible reversal. So whenever you're just, you know, minus one or two, whoops, I'm gonna steal my turn back anyways. Also just a note here about the shield charge as well. The shield charge itself is also special cancelable. So if you're looking to just, you know, be extra tricky and say, you know, you got your buffs up here, you can just charge in all nice and armored. Well, then also being able to keep the pressure going with say your drill base attack and then just kind of always keep it your turn. Other fun things about the character, her force function is a big shield slam. And with the shield buff live, you better believe she can tank through multiple hits, smash the enemy on the other end of things. Now you do need the buff. Without the buff, not so much in the way of guard points, but hey, them's the breaks. Also, another fun little trait of the character with the sword buff specifically, is if you hold her throw, you actually change the throw from the base throw. This is the regular throw. If you hold it, it adds a special attack to it, and when you land on the ground, you can cancel your landing into EX moves. So you can get a, just a bit more taste of damage than you would on a regular base throw. But yeah, attack, 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 pressure, 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 build buffs so we can keep attacking and building pressure. That's sort of the name of the game here. Over the years and over the revisions of the games, uh, Wagner's been called a lot of names is my understanding, including uh, near and dear to my heart, a gorilla. Now, I'm not going to say necessarily this version of the game is exactly that, but if you like a straightforward, just smash the enemy in the face style of game plan, Wagner definitely can pull it off. So Ori is a very neutral oriented character and very good at it. Uh, one of the things that really helps here, well, one, the sword, you could probably infer, but yeah, it's a good sword for poking folk, as you do. And also her walk speed is incredible. So when it just comes to doing, you know, the neutral part of fighting games without having to commit to anything too crazy, just this really fast walk speed helps a lot. So good walk speed, good pokes, a lot of her special, like the Core Circle 4 series, are effectively also just long range pokes as well. Uh, the heavy versions you can charge. The light versions now have a follow up, so you can kind of stagger. So if people are trying to hit buttons right after the fact, well, then you can bop them on the ground. Also, the follow up, if it catches someone mashing and hits as a counter hit, it gives more frame advantage, and therefore you can indeed combo from it. So, interesting stuff. But this is selling Ori short because there's a pretty big aspect of the character here in that she's a really big fan of Persona. So she has her own construct she can summon, which also has their own big F off sword. You do it on the ground, you can do it in the air. Uh, specifically, the ground version also has many follow ups. So there's the base strike, which will be whatever it'll be. And after the base strike, you can hit back A for a double swing. You can hit back B for a big launcher You can hit back C for an even bigger launcher. Or you can go to her force function, which is a basically a giant command leap, which uh, very easily crosses people up. So if you're looking for that, that's going to be there. And it's just an additional layer of mobility for the character. Now, like, as an approach, I wouldn't necessarily recommend over an, uh, you know, a jump. But unlike that, you can do it kind of whenever you want. Like say, is the enemy blocking your stuff? You can just do the force function, just jump right over their head, right? Uh, it lets you basically jump cancel everything and not just on hit. Other fun tools with your not persona is things like the down down series. So down down and a button call will call them on screen and they will shoot out an orb. This also does delete projectiles, by the way. And more importantly, leaves you incredibly advantage on block because before they call the attack, you can freely move around and the enemy just kind of has to block, which is good because, you know, Easy enough lows, but her overhead's very interesting. 
The base overhead, no matter what, it's going to be always plus five on hit, even if they're standing, let alone crouching, which means you can always get a crouch light after the fact and get some mana or combo. The amount of resources you're willing to dump into it will mean your damage, but it's more than just the base hit. You'll always get a pretty decent reward off the overhead, and it's uh, decently fast enough for what it is. Also newly added for this version of the game, uh, she has a metered force function, quarters go back B and C, and she'll summon Thanatos and just kind of leave the screen and go and attack. So you can freely just kind of follow up after the fact. And also, as you just saw here, it is also a launcher. So if you're inclined to stay combo into it, that is also an option available to you. So not too tricky. You know, not heavy mix-up, not incredible zoning like some of the other characters we've covered in the video. Uh, just kind of honest nooch, if you will, but in a very fun way. You know, it's gotten the buttons to support it, got the tools to support it. Her backdash is crazy as well. Her rock speed's crazy. Uh, her just general buttons and presence is pretty good. If you like a straightforward, well-rounded character, it also looks cool. I like the whole aesthetic she's rocking here. Sort of like Fencer Nun, right? So if you like that kind of character... And you like justice, I guess, and more cru- This is a lot of, like, crucifixion-style attacks in this game, eh? Uh, if you like all that, Ori is that character. Now, Merkava, there's a chance you've heard of him or seen him, even if you don't know this game. Why is that? Because he's the guy that does the thing. As in... That. So you may have seen a gif of that or a video over the years, I don't know, but he's that guy, FYI. So Merkava is our game's resident freak character, for lack of a better term. Every fighting game has one, and Merkava's that guy. Because he runs all weird, uh, turns out he can fly, all that fun stuff, on top of having some incredible range on a lot of his normals. So what are we doing with this character? Well, uh, just kind of space control. As mentioned here, the normals are just fantastic. They're amazing for what they are. And also due to the flight, he has really good control of just the screen in general. Uh, things like jump B, the range on that's pretty titanic. Jump C as well, if you can catch the enemy. Uh, has dive kick style as a moves, right? So while you're just kind of doing your thing, it works out. Also, he has air specials like the air fireball. So you can toss those out and control screen that way as well. And those long limbs aren't just for attacks and strikes. He can reach out and grab you. Now, is this a hit grab, not a command grab, but still, it is an option, and he has anti-air versions as well. And he can just do general fisticuffs as well. Also, one of the most interesting aspects of the character is his pressure. So down, down, and a button, he'll rip his own arm off, and it will uh, go alive. It'll just kind of chase the enemy. And of course, naturally, while it's attacking, you can attack. And if you're willing to burn a little meter, well, things just get out of control really quick, as you can see here. For things like his force functions, he does have a hit grab where he'll toss you around, gain a lot of grid. And yes, using a force function usually takes some, but don't worry, you'll more than make up for it, so that works out. And new to this game, he has a new force function, down B and C together, and it smacks the enemy. And if you hold it, it'll transition you directly into flight stance. So it's probably a lot of fun little gimmicks you can figure out through that. So if you're just looking for someone who's just kind of plain weird and a lot of just downright solid tools, and for a lot of people, I think the weird matters more. But uh, if you're looking for that, Merkava is exactly that. Coming now to Seth. Seth is very much in the very speedy, short range, but very quick kind of mix up, maul you kind of character. And he has one very important tool to do that, and that's his projectile. Now, as fireballs go, not exactly winning any zoning wars, but that's not exactly the point with this character. As after he sets it up, he's very free to do whatever he wants, and that projectile will be following up behind him. And while he's attacking and pressuring, you can combo into it. Maybe he stops, lets you try something, and then while you're trying something, you get hit by the projectile, because if you get hit by the projectile at all, you are very much in a combo okay state. And he has many ways to set it up, he can also do it in the air. He can do it while in the air. He can have it behind him. He can have it in front of him. He also has a bit of a buff. This is his force function. So while his buff is live, if he has it out, it'll travel much further. And one of the things about this is 
When it's out, the enemy can just tap it and it's gone, right? That sucks. But if you do your force function first and then throw it out, now the enemy can't just tap it away. They have to deal with it in a more concrete way, like say, trying to hit you. But that's basically building block number one. You set up the projectile, it takes a hot second to get going, but when it gets going, it works and you can do whatever you wanna do while it's happening. So set up and then attack, attack, attack and pressure away. To help the pressure as well, he has a bit of a command run. So partway through this, you'll be invulnerable to projectiles, which helps him get in, that's cool. And this is quarter circle back light specifically. If you do quarter circle back B, medium, he's a bit airborne and heavy, even more airborne. So you have multiple angles of just travel. And of course, you can attack after you're airborne as well, which helps. Also, you can use it to pass through enemies. And if you hold a button while you're passing through an enemy, you may notice this little sparking state, right? So about this is it's effectively a counter attack. If you catch the enemy hitting a button while this happens, he'll shift into a command grab. And yes, he does have a command grab as well. It's not exactly the most damaging command grab in the world, nor is it meant to be. It's one of those deals where, you know, while you're doing all your gimmicks, you have all your pressure set up, you have your orbs set up, you can command grab them. Also, the projectile can combo into them while they're being command grabbed, right? So it just gives you another layer to crack open the enemy. Speaking of which, he also has a dive kick style style move here. And the medium version also is a command grab as well, right? So he has a lot of ways to uh, stop you from being passive. Other things to help crack people open while you're doing this dash with the enemy here. On top of the counter attack effect here, you can also hit up and a button and wind up teleporting on the other side and attacking them with an overhead. Or you can just say hit the medium button while you're doing it here and just be airborne. And when you're airborne, you can do any airborne okay special moves like say the command grab we mentioned earlier. Or you can start tossing some orbs. He's very free form like that. And if you want to be tricky, a new thing he has here is run force function, and it's just an instant cross up. So it's probably going to be like a classic online special move because no one's going to block that the first time around. And yes, by the way, this move does have to be stand blocked as well, by the way. You can't crouch block it. So generally, just a lot of trickiness, like even has things like fast fall, which is always a very shifty style move to have because it always confuses people pretty easily, right? And it also has follow ups where you can teleport after the fast fall as well because, yeah. But generally speaking, the name of the game is simply set up the fireball. Set up the fireball, it'll come out after delay. And while it's coming out after delay, you're doing whatever it is you need to do. Pressure the enemy and if they dare fight back, you can just down back and let them get hit by the projectile and you get a full combo. So that's kind of the setup, that's kind of the premise. Everyone eventually makes a mistake, that's the nature of fighting games. And it's on you with the tools you have available to force that mistake with Seth. That sounds good to you. This is your guy. Going on to Nanase. So Nanase is the wind character and uh, kind of all that it entails. Uh, traditionally, wind characters in any fighting game have tricky movement and her force function very much a sign of that as it gives her complete and total air control. You can also do it all in the air. So I can hit you one side and maybe I'll hit you on the other side. Hey, who knows, right? Because uh, certainly... But the floats can be difficult, and of course, just general rejump pressure. Because am I just gonna land, go low, or am I gonna hit and come back and go more multiple overheads, all that kind of stuff? And well, tornadoes. Let's talk about it. So she has an air projectile. Uh, air only cannot be done on the ground, FYI. And it's chargeable. And this is the regular version. And there's an A and B version. And if you hold it, well, it gets a lot better and it gets a lot bigger, as you can see here. And the beauty is. You can tie your knee these. You can do it as basically low to the ground as possible as long as you're still in the air. And even point blank. These are plus, well, plus over 10 as you can see here, right? So they make fantastic pressure tools and they eat up a lot of the screen, especially the B version because the B version kind of touches the ground first and then starts going. And naturally enough, if you are so inclined, you can be well in front of it by the time it actually connects. So that's very helpful as far as pressure goes. And if the charge version is actually having to connect, well, it's just about the easiest layup of all time as far as like combo ability goes, right? So big plus frames, big reward on hit, and you can kind of just toss these bad boys out and just see what happens. Go from there. Now that's hardly all. We also have Sword Car. So Sword Car, uh, very similar to other enemy fighting game moves you may know, just kind of a big old scrape in the ground attack, and it does have multiple follow-ups. So if you have the A follow-up as a wall bounce, 
If you do the B follow-up, it's a leaping overhead. And yes, this must be block standing, by the way, it's a true overhead. And if you do the C follow-up, most interesting of all, if you do the C follow-up and it hits, then it'll launch the enemy. And then you can just do kind of whatever. But if it doesn't connect, then the enemy blocks or it's whiffed for whatever reason. And it's basically a get out of dodge teleport. So it has multiple uses. The knockup effect will only apply if the move actually connects, if you do the C follow-up. But besides this, we have proper reversals with a big tornado uppercut, actually multiple tornado uppercuts. One more of a proper strike than a reversal, which also has follow-ups as well. A, B, or C, you'll basically do a dive kick follow-up. And uh, the bigger the button, the bigger the dive kick. And dive kick, by the way, naturally enough, can be done by itself. All sorts of versions, don't you worry. And newly added for this version of the game, we have a move you may remember from another different fighting game. So it's basically a big old spinning top. And the beauty of this move specifically is if you do the A version, it happens right away. The attack happens right away. And it's safe on block for what it is. The B version though is delayed. And as it's delayed, uh, you can definitely move first. Uh, very advantage on block. Also, you can use your force function and jump cancel out of it as well, which can lead to some tricky things. So pretty standard. The big thing is lots of screen control through the charged projectiles. Once again, if you do the tiger knee, that definitely helps you a lot. And also the very uh, non-standard aerial movement thanks to the force function. The fact you have just a supreme amount of air control and just the, you know, being a sword user, you got some big normals, like very big lows, down B, down C, all very big, right? Uh, also the running attacks here, the heavy is an overhead, the uh, B is a low, so there's already kind of canned mix there as well. But either you want to do some aerial based jumping shenanigans with the force function or just big time screen control with projectiles, but not to say has a lot to work with. Now, phone on. Phone on has the whip. So you're probably already thinking, okay, so this is like the long range character or something, and like, yeah. Like if the sweep hits from this far away. Well, actually, I lied. It hits from this far away. Actually, I lied. It hits from this far away. Actually, I lied. It hits from this far away. So, like, yeah, there's some range there, to say the least. Uh, things like uh, back medium, also uh, long range, brings the enemy in as well. Uh, counts as a normal, so you can use reverse speed to go into any normals you so choose, which is really cool. And, like, yeah, this is the range character, right? Like, a uh, good fireball game, basic fireball game. Uh, it's almost like a standard state, like King of Fighters style. Uh, can also do it in the air. So can just kind of slap these bad boys around covering multiple angles, which is really good. Is chargeable on the ground, meaning uh, the grounded version will do more hits, more damage. That's really good. Also, something is a little messed up. So, you know, what if you're in that situation where, like, I threw a fireball, but they jump and they hit me in the face. That sucks. Worst nightmare scenario, right? Don't want to look silly. The thing about Phonon and her projectiles is the recovery is cancelable into any EX move. So say if I toss the fireball, right? I can cancel the recovery of the fireball toss into EX fireball toss. So I can get like a lot more projectiles, right? Or conversely, say if I know someone's gonna jump, well then I can cancel that recovery into my anti-air invincible move. <laughs> so, uh, you're not always winning if Phonon's on the ball is what I'm trying to say here. We got some fun force function stuff here too. Uh, the basic version is pretty good, just anti-air. The forward version is multiple whips. And the thing about these is these are all cancelable into uh, their own follow-ups, which is very handy. The C version specifically just lets you really go to town on the enemy. But they're also all special cancelable, all three hits. The first one, second one, and the third one. However you want to go, you can be really tricky about it. And other things like the A follow-up here, where's it just, well, another big whip. That counts as normal, so that means you can also use reverse beat style moves as well from it. So if you really want to trick people up and go into even more normals after the fact, that's another option, right? So yeah, range. I think it sells itself just based off of what I showed you, but also a little bit of trickiness as well. Also new to this version of the game, down, down, BC, force function, now gives you an install. And it makes uh, a lot of your moves say a lot more explosive. So basically it makes all your projectiles just much more devastating across the board. Also your Dragon Punch series as well, makes that quite a bit better, much bigger explosions and allows for some trickiness. 
Like, say, if on the aerial fireball, right? Like many moves in this game, the air version, you can do the Tiger D technique. And you can make it pretty advantage. But what if you made it, like, all the way advantage, right? And now instead of just a couple frames, you're talking, like, 10 plus. So it allows, uh, enables just some, you know, tricky pressure as well. It does take, you know, half your bar. So it's not free. You only get a few uses before it's kind of wrapped up, right? But it's still there. And well, if it's there, you might as well play around with it. So yeah, uh, not too much to say. Very good screen control, good projectiles, good options. Uh, a sweep that's about 95% of the screen. What's not the love there? Now going from one zoning style character to another, although in a very different way about it, let's talk about Yuzuriha. So her whole deal, well, you see that big old sword? Pretty big, right? And definitely not for show. As many of her sword specials, just travel a huge amount of the screen. And the thing about them specifically is you can cancel them into each other. So I can go say like medium, light, and heavy, get into the EX. And then I've kind of tapped the opponent for appreciable amount of damage from pretty far away. Much the same here, also command normals out the wazoo here. So uh, kind of like the special move sword swings, although just a little bit less range. And all these bad boys also go into one another as well. So it's just a matter of finding the order that works for you. But don't worry, there's some defensive aspects here. The coat. Now, uh, this coat's something else. This is like Joseph's Technicolor dream coat here because it's also a parry. And it can parry people from pretty far away. Uh, so long range moves, it can nullify them. And if you're just a little bit closer, it can kind of vacuum people up and launch them. And obviously the closer the better as far as that goes, right? And this is just back medium. This is not like some fancy special. Just a very interesting part of the tool set. And hey, speaking of interesting parts of the tool set, so the Cortical 4 series where you do the big slash, if you hold a button, and it can be any button, A, B, C, or D, you then enter the stance. And the stance uh, mobility is not necessarily the strongest part of it here. But while you're in the stance, a lot of things are possible. So uh, bare minimum, a lot of your quick sore normals are still there, as you can see. Also the special versions as well. So if you do like say the cortical forward motions, you'll be getting the, those versions of the move. And here's the thing. You do have some interesting mobility options and like kind of soft teleports and all that kind of stuff while it's going. And you can effectively freely mix and match all these together. Another fun thing about the stance is while you're in the stance, generally speaking, all the moves, if you choose not to cancel them into each other, they all actually recover just a little bit better as well. And while you're in the stance, you have the airborne options, right? And you can still do the airborne versions of all these sword swings. And yes, they are, are all airborne okay as well. So uh, when I talk about her range being pretty good, like her ability to control the screen uh, is pretty fantastic, as you can see here. So we got big sword swings. We got the cool stance, which kind of changes some of our properties and also gives us some unique options as well. We got the cool parry, but we also have other things like the charge force function. So this is forward B and C. And you see there's a bit of a charge time, right? And the thing about that is, as you can see here, guard all. Well, it's unblockable. So uh, it's a little slower. People can see it. Uh, the one thing uh, is you happen to have the Vorpal bonus. It actually does charge just a little bit faster as well. So that's helpful. She also has multiple regular throws. So not quite command grabs, but that's the regular one. But if you hold down, she'll hit you in the stomach and you crumple right in front of her. And from this state, you absolutely can get air combos and all that kind of stuff, right? So if you're willing to dump a little bit of meter, a little bit of resources into it, you can get some decent damage. So she always has the threat of controlling space because just one stray slice bounces you on the wall and that could be all she wrote from there, right? Uh, but some other fun things like her jump A, jump light. It's active all the way till you hit the ground, which I think is pretty cool. Like, so it's just kind of a good fire and forget jump. Uh, she does have teleports. These are more for the mobility rather than trying to mix you up, just FYI. But it does let her be a little silly in her quest to control the screen. To me, she's always been sort of like the waifu character of the franchise. So if you skipped here first before everyone else, well, hey, there you go, right? So if you want cool samurai lady, yo. Yuzuriha is exactly that. She's uh, one of the main faces of the franchise, as far as popularity goes anyways. And she slices the samurai sword pretty cool. 
So, Quan, he is uh, the last of the characters recovering, the final newcomer to the game, and he's silly. <laughs> uh, he's a big grab bag and just a, a bunch of fun stuff. Uh, so, one, uh, he does have a beam style projectile. Light doesn't quite go full screen. However, uh, the medium version will, and very fast travel time, as you can tell. And it does have a follow up here with a gigantic pillar. All you have to do is just hit the button again after it connects. So, very easy follow up, right? So, you know, good standard zoning tool. And hey, speaking of zoning, we got some pinwheels here. Very active, stays on the screen a long time. As you can see here, Quan can freely move around after it is done. So, once again, screen control aspect very strong. And that's also enabled here by his Dragon Punch Motion series. So, it's effectively a teleport attacks. So, at a moment's notice here, you can get this kind of surge forward and these are all air okay by the way and uh the air version light is a low which uh you know you're never gonna block the first time around uh the medium version's an overhead so that's kind of like a can 50 50 right there uh, not the least switch to his run heavy is a overhead and uh down forward heavy command normal is bison slide so you can just run forward am i hitting you with the overhead I run forward am i gonna hit you with a slide hey hope you guessed right Slide being a normal, also a special cancelable, by the way, which all the fun uh, implications that come with it. Also helping with the zoning tool set, we got pillars! So we have close, we have far, uh, the enhanced version just kind of tracks wherever the opponent may be with a gigantic launcher. So on the base set here, with some of the silliness of the teleports we saw, good zoning tool set, right? And some good canned 50-50s as well. And my friends, that's not all! He has charge down up ABC. Uh, it's effectively a flash kick, if you will. He said the cover is a gigantic 360 around him. Uh, the light version is not invincible. Just FYI, but the medium version is invincible. You don't got to spend any meter or anything like that. So good defensive tool. The normals are pretty generous for what they are, especially Ford C. Uh, eats up a lot of screen, eats up a lot of real estate. Uh, he just kind of has a lot of good things working out for him, I would say. Now let's enter the force function. Let's get silly. Let's take to the skies. Because he has proper flight. And uh, it's very easy to control flight. Almost like, like a Zamasu if you ever played Dragon Ball Fighters. And kind of everything that entails. You can do all of his air normals. And once again, he has very good air normals from flight. So that's very handy. Things like his beams are also air okay. Also fun things like, hey, am I going to jump and go low or am I going to jump in, force function, stay in the air and do more air attacks, right? Uh, so flight's good. Also, uh, things like his beams, you can also do those in the air, FYI. And his pillars can also be done in the air, FYI. Um, so he's just like, let's grab so many different cool, different things, smash them all into one character, and it just kind of works. Also, we're not done yet, actually. Let's go back to the force function here for a second here, the flight. Uh, so if you hit the B and C again in a specific direction while you're in the air, you can get different options. Like, you can toss your pinwheel and teleport to the ground. That's backwards. If you hit forward, uh, you'll do your beam toss, just kind of advancing. Versus, like, say, doing a normal. And while you're doing fun stuff like this, like, okay, I'm going to hit you with a jump thing, flight. If you hit down in B and C, then he teleports into the bison slide on the ground. So, silly character. Silly, silly character. So if you just like doing just a big grab bag of random stuff that all just kind of works out together, this is the dude. Also, I didn't go through the story yet. I think he's the new villain. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong on that. He kind of has that appeal, that look to him. But yeah, Quan, he's silly. So that is our choose a main video. So we went through every single character in the game, and hopefully I've given you a decent idea what every single character is about, and that can inform you to help, well, choose your main. So, long video. Hey, if you watch to the end here, leave a like if you could. It really helps the video out. And otherwise, well, I guess we are at the end of the video. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Undernight in Birth.